Hey guys, uh, welcome to the Linux channel. So in my first episode of uh, TunTap interfaces, uh, I have described about uh, the initial uh, introduction of uh, TunTap interfaces and uh, the various uh, use cases in which you can use either uh, Tun or uh, Tap interface uh, and uh, the overall architectural uh, concept behind the same. And uh, in this episode, I would like to discuss about uh, specifically about the tap interface and i would like to also show a small uh, demo program uh, with which we can access uh, the tap interface as i said in my first episode you can't access uh, the tap interface uh, uh, with the standard uh, raw socket uh, code instead you need to uh, write or else instead you need to write uh, more like a you know you need to approach more like a device driver uh, uh, contact with uh, you know uh, standard uh, read write uh, open close uh, uh, apis and uh, uh, before you do the open of the same or after you do the open of the same you need to just set what is the kind of role uh, the interface has to play so i would like to show you my uh, source code after that uh, i can also show you a quick demo so before that i would like to uh, uh, explain the overall scenario in which i would like to do a test setup of the same so assume you have created a linux bridge so in this case i have uh, a belkin uh, wi-fi router so assume it's a, a bridge because it is uh, all this uh, you know home based wi-fi routers are also kind of it will have an integrated uh, bridge along with a router inside as you can understand it will have multiple lan ports and uh, each lan port is like a tap and you can assume uh, it's a it's a kind of a bridge so you can assume uh, this is your linux uh, bridge uh, which uh, once you create with the brctl command it establishes in the linux kernel uh, context so once a bridge is created you can you can hook one of the physical uh, uh, interfaces to the bridge so let me just uh, conceptually explain the same what is exactly happening in the system of my uh, configure, uh, configured system as so assume you have uh, a physical ethernet port in my case its name is eno1 let me show the output of my interfaces so you can see here the output of my if config so currently it has not uh, any uh, tap interface is uh, created so it just shows as it is i just booted uh, and then uh, it, these are the interfaces which exist so one is eno1 the other one is enx and uh, followed by some sort of you know mac id name so that is uh, nothing but uh, my usb to ethernet uh, adapter so totally there are two uh, ethernet interfaces one is eno1 so assume if this is your physical ethernet port and you can create a tap interface so that is going to be like a virtual interface so essentially what we are doing is in the linux uh, kernel bridging you are connecting these two interfaces you know to the bridge so that this interface will be connected to the linux bridge and then same way even this uh, virtual uh, tap interface uh, will be connected to the linux bridge so this way what happens is you will have uh, a kind of packet flow if there are any packets uh, uh, which uh, arrives at uh, uh, you know uh, the port eno1 in my case uh, so or the physical port you know they will go to the linux bridge context and from there it will uh, appear in the tap interface so once you have uh, your uh, driver code or else uh, your access code to access the tap interface you can access these packets and then uh, in case if you are writing any uh, uh, bridging uh, stack or any network stack you can access these packets and you can uh, i mean once you get packets in the tap interface you can process them and uh, you can send it out on other interface so assume a case like you have uh, uh, a van in a van device or uh, some kind of gateway or uh, firewall uh, which happens a case that packets are getting processed in user space you have your network stack in user space so in that case you can uh, tap these packets in tap interface assume it is working in layer 2 context as i said in my first episode the tap interface is used for uh, bridging context or layer 2 context whereas a ton interface is used for ip based context or routed based network so in that case what happens is you get the packets out from your tap interface and then you can process the same and then you can like you can uh, 
take an action you can send it out in another interface or other physical interface so in that case if you have two physical interfaces you can get the packets from physical interface to the tap interface you process these packets and then you can send it out in uh, other physical interface so same thing you can do vice versa in that way what you can have is you can have a, a complete uh, you know uh, forwarding engine so you have various forwarding engines so like uh, for example you have uh, dptk forwarding engine they have their own way of implementation as one can understand dptk is uh, intel's uh, uh, proprietary solution uh, they have their own uh, way of uh, establishing a fast path so that uh, dpdk uh, is quite advantageous because it uh, uh, bypasses various uh, amount of kernel layers or kernel apis and uh, by doing so you get some kind of fast path so that quickly you get the packets in user space you can do processing of these packets and then you can send them out through other interface so this is the advantage of tpdk and with the turn type also you can do somewhat similar to that as such so what happens is this is what is the current scenario so essentially in this uh, demo uh, before i do the same uh, I, let me explain once again so i get the packets in physical port and then i get it to a virtual tap interface via linux kernel bridge and uh, once i get this packets i just print them on the screen and then uh, I, I just print them on the screen and uh, ignore the same so by doing so what you can do is you can also capture these uh, packets in uh, wireshark uh, you know you can capture the tap interface uh, packets in wireshark you can also uh, if you are interested you can also capture packets uh, <coughs> which are appearing in the physical interface and also the packets uh, which are in the bridging context so this way you can uh, see the entire flow of uh, packets in all uh, the cases and then you can uh, build your network software and uh, while doing the same in case if you are uh, having issues you can debug uh, with wireshark and you can also debug with your own custom c source code so so, so let me just uh, show my uh, source code and let me explain uh, various uh, components involved So this is uh, my uh, source code, it is quite uh, simple, you can just come down here, uh, we are generally using uh, to open an interface and uh, close the interface or the socket descriptor, we are just using the standard, uh, you know, read, write and uh, uh, close APIs and uh, to open uh, the interface, we are using uh, this open API or the system call as you can see here and I just wrote a wrapper uh, like a tab open so this wrapper will help uh, to do all sorts of uh, initialization part of it so that uh, it is not uh, pushed on to your uh, you know main of uh, uh, main API so that it doesn't uh, look you know um, confusing us so I just pushed all the context inside that tap open API so as you can see here I'm uh, doing a tap open so before that let me just explain the flow of main of API so what I'm doing is I'm getting this uh, I'm creating a tap interface let me show my create code so this is my uh, sample uh, create code with which I'm establishing the entire bridge setup what I just explained with this physical hardware so what I'm doing is I'm creating a tap interface and I'm setting its IP to 0 and then my physical port I'm setting its IP to 0 and then making it as a promiscuous mode and then I'm creating a sample bridge Linux kernel bridge as one can understand BRCTL if you're a beginner in Linux network software please understand BRCTL with which you can create a, a Linux bridge but it is not going to create in user space it is just going to uh, give an access uh, for the user space apps to create a bridge inside the Linux kernel space so please understand it happens in kernel everything happens in kernel access so brctl uh, command with which I'm creating a, a bridge called as tap br and that's the name of uh, the sample bridge which I'm creating so I'm setting stp on and then I'm adding this so I'm including these two interfaces to the tap br as you can see here add interface tap br tap interface and add interface tap br en1 so after uh, it is done i'm enabling the tap interface uh, with if config uh, uh, sorry i'm sorry uh, tap uh, bridge uh, uh, i'm enabling that uh, bridge interface so if you are interested if you want an ip address you can also set over here uh, uh, by doing uh, if config tap br and you can set your ip and subnet mask uh, for this 
in our bridging interface so once it is up uh, i'm just resetting once again uh, you know there is some kind of issue it is not resetting uh, uh, you know tap interface uh, 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 the promise curve mode or uh, it is not bringing up so i'm just uh, you know bringing up once again so this is my script and it is just working fine so i'm not going to much uh, uh, you know first around i mean it's just working fine so this is my script so what we can do is we can copy the script and we can paste over here so as you can understand each command is uh, preceded with a sudo uh, so before that you can do a sample sudo so and you can go back and then you can copy paste over here so you can see here all the lines got executed and uh, you can do an if config so as you can see here now the if config looks uh, different uh, the no one doesn't have any uh, v4 or ipv4 address and then uh, you have uh, the new interface called tap interface over here as you can see here and eno1 doesn't have any interface and then you have this new interface uh, bridging interface tap br so if you do show of br ctl show you can see here uh, uh, tab br is created which is a linux uh, bridging context or bridging interface and uh, to this uh, linux uh, virtual bridge uh, the uh, tab interface the virtual tab uh, interface port and uh, eno1 the physical <laughs> ethernet port are linked so that uh, you know you have a bridge and these two ports are linked so this tells essentially any packets arriving even at you know eno1 is going to arrive at uh, you know tap interface so with that what happens is the ip of this entire system is going to uh, disappear so since it is in promiscuous mode it is just going to capture any packets uh, floating around in my network uh, so any kind of uh, since uh, there is no uh, uh, packets which are exactly directed towards the system it is just going to capture any uh, stray uh, uh, broadcast packets and as well as any uh, uh, you know stp packets and so on so with that uh, what we can do is we can hop on to the source code so this source code i'm going to include the download link <coughs> i'm sorry i have a, a terrible throat infection and tonsil so it is so uh, uh, I'm just getting that irritation as such. So what happens is uh, this uh, source code I'm going to share it. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, upload in uh, Google Drive and I'm going to give uh, the link of the same so that you guys can download it and you can modify and you can uh, use it in your project. So I'm going to share my both uh, uh, you know uh, tap.txt uh, as well as uh, uh, tapaccess.c so that. Uh, you can also recreate this demo and then uh, from there you can go forward and uh, you know continue with your uh, experimentation and the uh, project uh, in case if you are building any project uh, based on tap interface you can take the source and you can modify and then you can just uh, try to embed within your project as it is so it just works so fine i have uh, tested with uh, uh, gigabits of data for some occasion and it is just working fine so this is what exactly happens in the main uh, as you can see here I am creating this uh, packet buffer and then I am creating another uh, character buffer uh, to hold the name of the interface. So I am uh, doing a hard code uh, uh, of this uh, name as a tap interface. I don't like much giving any command line options because it confuses your source. So I am just directly hard coding here and then I am doing a tap interface open and this is going to essentially call this API and this api is quite simple as of course it is quite difficult to understand but you don't need to break your head this is the uh, standard way of uh, you know initializing the tap interface so that's what exactly it is doing here it is doing uh, open system call and then it is passing all these uh, parameters and uh, if the file descriptor is created it is also kind of setting its mode so that it works in tap interface mode if it is a uh, Turn interface. Uh, uh, it's, if it is a turn interface, you need to set here as IFF uh, turn. So in this case, it's a tap interface. I'm setting the mode and I'm setting various other parameters, as you can see. So once uh, it is created, uh, I'm just checking if the file descriptor is created successfully over here. And if it is created, uh, all I'm doing is I'm just uh, uh, reading it again and again. And if there are no packets uh, which are existing in the tap interface. 
it is going to return uh, the number of bytes or the output of read api or read system call as uh, you know a zero or something like that or else a error value so if there is any error value or if the output is zero i'm just doing a repeat i'm just doing a sleep so that it doesn't load or overload the system so i'm just using a small u sleep of 100 and then followed by which in case if it succeeds reading any bytes i'm printing a few bytes in the screen so so that we can understand what exactly happening in the uh, you know tap interface what exactly we are receiving in the tap interface so this is going to continue again and again as you can see here it is a sort of infinite loop it's just a simple go to so once the bytes are printed on the screen i'm doing a go to repeat so it is just going to loop back and then it is going to continue so in any case in case if you do Control C or kill this application or user space application what happens is it is going to handle the signal and it is going to uh, stop the tap interface and then it is going to gracefully exit the application so that is the reason i'm using this signal logic so the source code is fairly simple as i said before so with this understanding we can uh, do a demo execution of the same so sudo since you are accessing uh, the port in a uh, sort of uh, driver level or uh, uh, you know basic system calls it is good to give a sudo access so you can see here uh, the packets are uh, started getting poured uh, in uh, getting uh, you know accessed in uh, tap interface you can see here we can able to read the packets which are arriving over here so to confirm the same you can open a wireshark capture and uh, you can capture you can capture all these interfaces uh, and you can debug uh, whichever you are interested but in this uh, uh, sample we can just do a capture of tap interface and then you can confirm what exactly happening in the uh, wire as far as the interface so you can see here uh, for now it is just sending uh, stp packets because there are no much you know broadcast packets you can wait for quite long time and you can also capture any broadcast packets happening in your network and you can also send any broadcast packets you can uh, uh, write a sample uh, uh, you know uh, raw socket code and you can execute in your laptop or some other device external device and then you can uh, send it to this ethernet uh, bridge uh, or ethernet switch and uh, in case if you do the same it is going to show over here so for now it is not getting any sort of broadcast packet so it is just displaying this stp packets over here so as you can see here these packets are starting from uh, 0180 and c2 and so on so this is the signature of beginning of these uh, packet bytes so you can see here on the screen it is also showing the same signature so it is essentially capturing whatever packets it are it is uh, receiving in the tap interface so this is how you can now uh, create a tap interface and this is how you can uh, link it and uh, uh, you can create a, a linux uh, kernel bridge and you can link it with your uh, uh, standard uh, hardware based ethernet port and then you can tap the packets uh, and then you can uh, create almost a sort of you know bridging context with tap interface and with a c program in user space you can read these packets and then in case if you're uh, building a network stack uh, you can attach this particular source code whatever i have uh, done uh, whatever i have uh, done uh, the tap interface uh, access source code uh, you can uh, extract this source code and you can embed in your projects as well so hope you guys uh, liked watching this video so in case if you have any questions uh, regarding ton tap interfaces uh, you can uh, send me across uh, in youtube comments and uh, in case uh, uh, you are interested you can also download its uh, source code uh, i'm be, as i said uh, earlier i'll be sharing its link uh, uh, it will be uh, uploaded in google drive so hope you liked uh, watching this video guys thank you once again for watching this video have a nice day bye bye